So we're going to start looking at some actual VBA controls and events. In the first module, which you should have completed, uh, we discussed general problem solving. Now in this module, what we want to do is take what we learned and apply it, um, starting with requirements, specification, design, implementation, and testing, um, the whole thing, but to a very simple process. And then gradually, we'll later introduce more features of VBA in Excel and start working on more complex processes. But first, we actually have to know enough VBA and Excel to write a program. So that's our goal in this module, to get started um, and learn enough about it and how it works to actually write something. So okay, um, when we did our design study, uh, we looked at working with objects and we talked about having an event-driven design. And that's going to carry over into what we're doing now. Um, we're going to have objects and processes um, in, well, objects in our process specification and the user interface and the things we use. Uh, those are going to be represented by um, Excel or VBA objects, such as controls, um, and also we'll be using variables. And objects and controls in v VBA have events associated with them, which we're going to also use. So uh, we'll translate our process events into control events, and for those, we'll write procedures. Now what we're going to do is start by writing a small macro. Now notice, this differs from recording, which we did before. We're going to actually write the code. And this will let us introduce a number of these basic concepts. Now this is what the code actually looks like. Um, it starts with option explicit, which is going to be important when we're using variables and need to declare them. Uh, it has a comment. Comments start with a single quote, like I'm showing you here. And then this is the actual code for the procedure. Now I go over this in a lot of detail in the video that shows you, that illustrates actually writing the code. So um, you should watch the video so you get each of the steps to do exactly and you can follow it. And the workbook with that, in, with that code in it and that macro in it is posted on the class site. Now, the best way for you to learn this is that after you watch the video, get, download the workbook, open it up, and write your own macro for a different color. So mine that I wrote turns a cell red. You should write one, say, that turns a cell green or some other color. Um, but go ahead and do that so you've gone through the process and you get a feel for it. Now, I just want to say a little bit about what's going on there. Um, clicking the button uh, in, in the spreadsheet that we inserted in the spreadsheet and associated with the macro, clicking that button or clicking on the clip art is an event that triggers the execution of the macro. And this is the pattern we're going to continue to follow as we build more elaborate user interfaces, uh, there's going to be an event that happens, such as clicking a button, that triggers um, the macro to run and do whatever it's going to do. And later, we'll also write macros that can be called by other macros, and we'll discuss that in our section on procedures. Now, a little bit about how we refer to objects and their properties in VBA and Excel. So the expression in our program that we wrote has this, active cell dot interior dot color equals VB red. Well, active cell is an object that's available to you uh, when you write a program in Excel. It's the cell that's been selected on the worksheets that's active. Okay, so um, that's, that's the, an object that your program has access to that's set up by the Excel system. Okay, now if we want to do something to it, um, you'll notice if you type active cell and then a dot, you're going to get a little drop-down menu that shows you all the possible things, which are sub-objects and properties that could be worked on by your program. Now what we want in this case is a sub-object called the interior, which just represents the interior of the cell. And then um, on that object, we then put another dot because we want to work on a property of that object, which is its color. 
So this expression means we're going to start with an object called the active cell, then go to a subject object, which is its interior, and finally to a property. And a property is a thing that has a value, which we can set using this assignment statement. And what this does is, is say, okay, I want the value of that property, the color, to be red. And this constant, VB red, represents the color red inside the system. Now we're often going to be setting properties of objects and cells have one property in particular called the value. So if I write active cell dot value, I can set the value to something say five. Now what that'll do is make a five show up in the cell and the value is the most important property of the cell. So you actually don't have to write dot value. You can just write active cell equals five and it assumes you mean value because that's the most important property. We're not going to do that. We will always put dot value or whatever the property is because it's a better way to program. Now besides properties of objects, we're also going to need more general var variables as we saw in our um, example when we talked about the interest rate calculator. We use variables to represent various quantities and we're going to do that in our programs as well and that's going to be the topic of the next talk.